The only difference between us and liberals is that we figured it out. We're still human. Uh, we at one point were on the other side of things too. That's what the whole walk away movement was all about. Welcome to Unified.TV, where truth has no fear. I am blessed to once again be sitting across from, well, digitally sitting across from, <laughs> uh, Miss Jordan Pisano. And a lot of you guys know her. And if you don't, I, you must not have any kind of social media platform at all. Uh, because, uh, I mean, honestly, um, I could brag on Jordan all day. And this is like off script. This is truly uh, like from the heart. If you guys don't follow Jordan, you're truly missing out. I'm, I'm talking about like some of the most intellectual feedback, some of the most intellectual breakdowns of current events that you, you will ever find anywhere else outside of my favorite person of all time, ABL. Um, but you, you're not going to find anything like Jordan's content. I guarantee you won't. Um, it, it, it's truly intellectual, gives you a different perspective and just raw, real opinions uh, with uh, no filter, you know, outside of curse words, no curse words on there, but there's still no filter. But you have to, <laughs> you have to appreciate Jordan's work because that's what drew me to her uh, platforms. And I'm definitely blessed to be able to have some more valuable time. So we're going to introduce Ms. Jordan Pazano. So what do you, what do you have going on nowadays? Well, I mean, first off that intro, man, that was, <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> Wow, that, that was like, I'm like, now I don't even know what to say. That was, that was really, really nice. So thank you. That is not <laughs> um, just kind of, I mean, I don't know, it's kind of doing the, 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 the same thing, like you were talking about, right? Like I, I did do talk about like politics and the, the culture and stuff of, of what's going on. And I've just been super consumed with um, running, running my, my newly opened store, my Shopify store um and pisano originals if you guys want to go you guys want to go look that up um so there's like apparel so there's like hoodies t-shirts hats all of that so like i've been working on that just have my head down there and uh yeah just it's it's really it's really cool learning a lot and um just like really excited so with the level of intellect that you have and this is no joke at all I compare you to the likes of uh, Amala or Amala, whatever her name is. They wanted a girl that signed with Prager U recently, and she was a TikTok oh. personality. I put you on that level, no joke, because uh, you you guys remind me of each other as far as your intellect, your raw, real material, and you guys have a perspective that most people don't take, <clears throat> and it can't be mimicked. You so said you guys are just a rare, natural way. That's why I respect people like uh, Anthony Brian Logan. Because he has a different perspective and it's intellectual. It's not something that someone just wants to get on video and rant about hot topics. And I just want to get my take on it. No, you guys actually bring facts to it, make sense out of it. And you're actually, you actually got, you guys have the, you have the ability to sway people's mindsets and that's not easy, you know? And so I have high, high respect for you. And uh, <clears throat> I could definitely see you being signed by a place like Prager U or Turning Point. That's, that is if you wanted to do it. I don't see why they wouldn't do it, honestly. Like, this is just no joke. That's how I truly feel. Uh, the sky is the limit oh, for you, you, and you're already, you know, at this level in your, in your early 20s, and uh, it can only get better for you because you already see what's going on. You're already, you're already, beating, you're already beating out um, a whole nation of people around your age who don't know what's going on and think they do. You figured it out already. So you're definitely way ahead of the curve. So it can only get better for you. Um, but I I, I'll be here to see that, it. Man. I'll be here. I'll be ready for it. I want, I want the first autograph. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but you actually covered something. <clears throat> you covered a topic that I actually covered too. We didn't have we didn't have different perspectives on it, but we had different um, ways of getting our feelings across on the topic. We both covered the um, the Kim Klasik. Uh, uh, I almost said oh. Kim the Kim Klasik, um, Can Candace Owens. Owens thing. Yeah. Your yeah. perspective, I guess you took heat. Did you take heat for your perspective yes. and why? Yes, I, I did. did. That's the part I missed. I didn't understand why people were so hard on you. Okay. So first of all, I had titled the, so I, I, I made a video before she had released her bombshell. Okay. Which 
in my personal opinion, didn't really tell us anything. And I'll, and I'll kind of explain that after. So I made a video about Brandon Tatum making a huge deal. You know, like there's drama. There's things that are going to come out that we haven't seen before. This and that, right? He went on the he went on the long thing about that. He was he made a claim that people, you know, people attack Candace because they're jealous of her. They're jealous of her platform and stuff like that. So he had said stuff like that. Candace Owens had made an uh, Instagram story saying, um, she's like, I'm shocked. I can't. It's crazy. It's this and that. And I'm thinking like, I don't, I don't remember ever seeing her behave that way. It just really seemed like a, um, and like, I understand, you know, with, with what she does, you need to have viewers and stuff like that. So she was kind of hyping it up, but I just thought like, that just seemed really weird. So I just kind of made my, I, I put all of the pieces together that I could because there was so much drama all of a sudden. And I had released that video like an hour before she had made her Instagram post that, like I said, my personal opinion didn't really tell us anything because she could only allege to things. She couldn't solidly prove anything that she said. And she kept referencing, um, Kim Clasic's past in an unnecessary way. Like there, there is a scenario in which it matters, but she consistently kept bringing it up when it didn't matter. And um, so I had made that post and then I made a follow-up one. I believe it was, I think it was the same day or the next or the next day or something after I had, after I'd watched her, her Instagram live. And I titled it. Now I know. If you guys are gonna, if you guys are gonna sell your soul to a person, then do that. I'm telling you, understand, like, understand me. I have not sold my soul to anyone. Candace is great. I really like her. I watch all of her stuff. Doesn't mean I agree 100% on everything, on how, what she says or how she handles things. I'm not defending Clasic. That woman is genuinely stupid. Apparently, She's genuinely stupid, but I see, I see problems on both sides with this. Okay. So what I meant was now I know, now I know what Candace was going to say, not, it wasn't that I was necessarily on her side. So I had titled it that I had tagged both Candace and Klasik in the video and Candace had reposted it. And I thought, Hmm. She didn't listen to what I, to what I said, because I know that if she had, she wouldn't have reposted it. So because Wait, she reposted Candace reposted your first video. No, she reposted the, the, the second one, the one that was titled. Now I know. Cause I meant now I know that now I have the information that has been like, so, you know, it dangled in your face. Then like, but I'll tell you later, like that kind of thing. Right. So it was like, okay, guys, now I know because when I had released the first one, it was what is going on. So it was like my video, Candace posted hers. And then people were jumping back to the first one that I had made. And they're like, Candace, you know, she said this and da, da, da. And I'm like, I haven't seen the video yet, guys. I like, can you not timestamps? My video came out first. So, you know, I haven't seen. Well, that's kind of sense if it says now I know. Yeah. Like, so. Yeah, so when it so when it comes to the video of of now I know Candace reposted it like that, right? Because it was, I mean, I'm assuming she believed that it was a win for her, right? She saw her name, she saw the title, and it was like you know now she's given the information. That's how I believe that happened, because in the video what I talked about, I said Candace didn't prove anything. Okay, she alleged to things. She said, these things are, you know, these things don't add up, whatever. And then she kept saying, I, Candace Owens, cannot confirm this and that. She had made a claim that she spoke to some stripper who used to work with Clasic. And this stripper we don't know about has some information that she can provide. But I don't know if it wasn't provided at the time or Candace wasn't releasing the information at the time. But it was basically just... There was a lot of, 
you know, well, this seems weird. Well, this seems weird. I can't confirm that this is what's happening to the money. I talked to someone that we don't know about. We don't have any evidence that this person can prove, you know, what they're saying they can bring to the table. There was none of that there. Um, and, and as I said before, Candace kept bringing up Clay Six past as a stripper. And the only reason that would matter is if she hasn't left that life behind because the whole thing was she was um she had used coke in a um in, in some club or something like that during the time uh, or she used campaign money excuse me to do that okay that was something that candace had alleged she can't prove it but she says that is something that happened so my thing was and, and then with classic okay like classic isn't upfront about anything she hasn't just in my to me if someone was making allegations like that about me i would like i would stomp that out i would ruin your life there's no like there is i would come at you full force if you were trying to do something like that to me and but classic was not straightforward about anything it was just it was just like you know this is slant this is i want to sue you for defamation this and that but she didn't outright deny anything that Candace had said. So I was going back and forth on, on those two things. So that was, so that was what it was. And it, and then it was just the, the Candace diehard fans just, they just came out they just came after me because I wasn't a loyalist. And that was basically what happened. People, people were just upset you know, like you, like, don't go out, you know, you go after Candace and she's going to do this and that. And I was, I just thought you guys are literally proving that this was a personal problem that she had, that Candace and Klasik had with each other. And now they're just sharing it with the world, but it started off as a personal problem. And, and I, and I really, and I like, I really like Candace Owens. I've been following her for a long time and stuff. And I have respect for how when she how, when she's telling the truth about something, she's relentless with it, right? She won't back down that kind of stuff. But, and I was talking to my husband about this the other day. Um, it seems more and more that she's getting into personal problems with people, and then trying to dress it up as though she's being like uh, some sort of conservative hero for people when it started off as like a personal problem. Yeah, that's another point that I didn't think about. That's another point that I didn't think about because, and uh, it kind of makes me wonder how much she could have known beforehand and said nothing about, or, uh, you know, why was it so quick and easy to go find this information? Because she attacked you for, I think, I think that, I think that Kim said that <clears throat> uh, Candace is not doing enough for the black community. Mm -hmm. so that forced her to say you know what okay what are you doing and it kind of it, it kind of it kind of took a personal edge and uh you know there may be reasons why they feel like kansas isn't going enough i don't know if they feel like she should be more hands-on with the chapters of blexit all across the u.s um or if they don't see the benefit of blexit maybe that's what it is but it's more so it's more so something that should have been kept on a business thing rather than attacking personally like you said it should have been like okay i'm doing this but what are you doing not necessarily what are you doing behind the scenes as far as your past as a stripper your possible coke use whatever if you're someone misappropriating funds if you can prove that that's that's business that that's fine <clears throat> but more so show what you're doing that she's not as far as benefiting the black community because that's the area she attacked you in that's the realm she attacked you in, but you went personal. Like, okay, you were used to be a stripper. Okay, well, Mike Lindell used to be a crackhead, but now look what he's doing. Yeah. One of the most respected patriots in the game. It doesn't matter what your past is. That's why I addressed in my video. If Kimberly Clasic is in fact a rhino, as people say, or if she's shady in any way at all, and you know, we're not talking about anyone's past. We we all have a past. We all have things that we are not proud of we all have done things that would be uh socially and in the public eye uh ridiculous uh arrestable in some cases uh just flat out wrong so i'm not judging anyone's past but if this past is recent if you're still doing shady things then 
expose, expose, you know, expose. It, if it's something that you did, that's one thing. But if it's something that you're currently doing that people don't that know about it. or donating to your cause, then that's something we need to know about. But you have to bring yes. facts to it. You yes. got to say, you can't just say, I heard about this and I'll bring it to it at a later time. You'd be better off not bringing it up at all until you have it to present. Because now yes. it just looks like you're being catty. And, uh, well, because j- j- just really, really quick, um, the the thing that that's been bothering me a lot is Candace has been so quiet; she hasn't brought that up at all. This is this is water, by the way. This is liquid death. This is water. I, I know it looks like a oh. it looks like a uh, beer can, <laughs> but this is actually oh, liquid I didn't, death. I didn't, I didn't even notice. I was like, <laughs> just in case anybody oh. watches this thing, it's just like throwing oh, okay, it back okay, on okay, camera. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry but you said yeah she didn't she didn't read she yeah. didn't respond it, it's just, no it's just she's been so quiet about this and it's like okay the usual candace will be into your head what is happening right this is what it is this is what it is she will not back down she says this thing about classic and nothing like Right. at all i don't know if it's because she works for the daily wire now and they're kind of controlling what media can go out or not but that's that's kind of bothered me a little bit in in the sense of it's like did you overstep what you said right i don't like right. you know we don't we don't know but and then nothing's happened with Classic. she hasn't lost her 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 position where she is at all nothing literally nothing has changed from this and i know there's gonna be people watching me like well classic attacked her publicly no they had their thing on twitter and then a conversation happened in the dms and then it became this whole thing because candace right. even posted it there it was personal messages it's like i don't know I don't that's know, something that should have been kept within then. their own personal text message and, and yeah. direct message. That should have never hit the public. Um, At least until anyway. you have solid proof. Like, don't say you're going to cross your T's, dot your I's, and then you just allege to everything. People, people have so much praise for people like Candace. And I, I have nothing against Candace. I'm not cra- anybody yeah. watching or listening. I'm not crapping on Candace. I'm saying that we allow ourselves to get to a certain point of admiration that we literally forget that they're that they're that they're not beyond human error and they're not beyond yeah. going too far and because okay let's be real here <clears throat> the top three people that i respect the most media wise personally people that i would love to meet um besides you i'm talking about like other people that i follow been following for a long time anthony brian logan the hodge twins and uh charlie kirk or Candace too, but I'm talking about as far as the people that I've really been digging into. I would love to meet all those people. I, I, I want to meet Victor Avila one day. I did an interview with him and I'm going to meet him one day. I know for sure he's local. Um, as much as I watch Anthony Brian Loka, there have been a couple of times where I didn't agree with one of his viewpoints and that's yeah. rare, but it happens. I think, you know, he, I think he kind of missed it on that and that's nothing against him at all because he's not beyond error. He's not beyond, and not to say I was right and he was wrong, but we had, we differed. And there's nothing wrong with that. When we get to a certain point of praise, it's like this person can do no wrong. And you come after this person, I'm gonna be in the trenches on you as if they're family. Why, why? Like this person is not God. And if you allow them to be your God, you yourself have gone too far with your admiration. You cannot praise these people to that kind of degree. And I think that's what you were addressing in, that, in your video is that the reason people got so upset is because they they praise her too much. It's like yeah, like in, I didn't in the mean very to trash her. I just said that she didn't she didn't bring forth what she was talking about. That's not even trashing her. It's just that I want to see it. There's nothing wrong with yeah, what you said. Yeah, yeah, and like I don't because with the with Candace's reputation, I don't assume she's making stuff up. Like I don't think she says things that she can't back up. However, like you said, some, you know, we, we all, we're all human. We all can, can mess up. And my thing is, I'm wondering if she just overstepped something, you know, like, because, because she really put a big stake in that, the, the, the stripper that she, that she said she spoke to, she really put an, an emphasis on that. And it's like, 
maybe i mean i'm not i'm not saying she didn't have that conversation my thing is she had this conversation with who that whoever this person is and what if that person is turned out to be like oh never mind you know i like i made it up you know whatever but the fact of the matter is she used she said she spoke to this person they have the receipts they have this and that but if you don't have them in hand you can't just you can't just be like Oh, well, because they said so, you know, like they're going to give it to me. What if they change their mind? You don't have it in hand. So that kind of makes you look like it's like, well, okay, Candace, like you don't have any proof. So I'm not saying that like she's lying about the conversation or, or like maybe, you know, maybe the rece- maybe the receipts are there, but we don't know because she didn't, sh- she didn't prove it to us. She didn't show it to us. Who knows? Maybe that person backed out. I don't know why the I don't know why she's been so quiet on this on this topic, but even like at the beginning of my video, I, I said for people, this is for people who've been following me, okay? If you've been following me for a while, it's fairly obvious the type of person that I am. If you think I'm gonna be loyalist to someone, like you are you are some kind of stupid to think that if you've been following me for some time. Because I mean, I've even ha- I've even said my my criticisms about Trump too. Because some people are just like he is, and, and, and you know, people love him. Whatever, that's fine. I I personally don't. I really do. I really like him. Yeah, but okay, there's things in there's things in his in his life, and and even things that he that he has done that I'm like, you know, I disagree with it. Some things I really the the way that some of the things that he did in his past i was like wow dude but you know if he's not doing if he's changing his life and he's not doing it anymore okay well then you know that only matters so much there are things that he there are some things that i may not just that i may not agree with currently in his personal life but does that affect him his policies and stuff when he was president no. And I really liked what he did as a president. It's like, you have to be able to separate the things. I'm not a loyalist to anyone. And also people may have been super heated because all of the drama was just like at its hottest point at that time. I don't know, but it, yeah. it was, there, there was a lot of people that were saying things that I didn't even say in my video. I'm like, that's literally not what I said just rewind it and that's literally not what i said so but that's the that's where the problem comes when you praise someone so much because you're 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 coming with this automatic bias you're not listening you know you're not you're not listening because you feel like what that person's saying is going against your beloved person and so you're not going to hear them out just because you feel like they're attacking that person and you know unfortunately we do that within our own families and but we should never do that with someone we don't know uh, you know, as much as you yeah. want to love Candace or Trump, like for me, I think it's okay. Well, I'm gonna go back to something you said before. You said that there are things that are in the past and present or uh, recent times that you disagree with as far as Trump, and that's fair. That's totally and that's legit. The problem I have with conservative folks is that they're very they can be very hypocritical. Um, mm-hmm. I think conservatives tend to have that holier than thou mentality because um, you know we all know conservatives are saving the world there's no other way to put it conservatives are saving the world because if it wasn't for <clears throat> this movement things wouldn't be at the level that they are because you know, we're the ones that are stepping up and saying hey look this is not cool this is not constitutional this is what we need to be doing but we're not perfect there's no perfect conservative, yeah but some of them act that way some of them do act that way, and it's embarrassing. It's like, dude, you're ruining the movement. You cannot act like that. We're no better than the liberals, honestly, because the only difference between us and liberals is that we figured it out. We're still human. Uh, we, at one point, were on the other side of things, too. That's what the whole walkaway movement was all about. That's what Lexit, Blexit, all these exits are all about, because we finally figured it out. Most of us were against Trump. I say most of us. I know I was. Most of us were. ABO was. Hodge twins were. No one knew what he was really about because the media did a great job of painting him as this, uh, you know, temperamental, uh, disrespectful, uh, what's the word, uh, reality star with no mm-hmm. with, with no filter. But we learned that he was better than that. Does he still have those arrogant ways in him? Yeah, that's part of his makeup. You know, that's just who he is. 
um, some things he said and done that I, I can never forget and I just don't agree with. You know, I don't agree with when he first got in office and how he was just openly making fun of people and always on Twitter, always. I didn't like that at all. I'm like, dude, this dude tweets every feeling he has. It's like, I know you're not a politician, but you're still a public figure in the highest office in the U.S. And you're always on. You cannot put you you got to slow it. You're not a kid anymore. You cannot be online. Oh, this person pissed me off today. Tweet. I got tired of that. I got so sick of that. And so I was not a fan of his at all. I didn't like how he openly made fun of women who were overweight. I'm not saying he hates fat women. I'm not saying he hates women. I'm not saying he's a bigger or anything like that. I just think that he should have had more of a filter. That's not who he is, but he learned. You gotta, you, people have to admit that he shaped up through those four years. Yeah. He shaped up majorly as far as his decorum, you know? Um, but he's not perfect, you know? So yeah. when Candace did bring those things up, my perspective, when I made my video, I had two things I wanted to hit on. I wanted to hit on the fact that she has a past, but we all do. And I also wanted to hit on the fact that everyone kept on um, making these stupid posts about all conservatives are fighting. Right? While well, we're all supposed to be sticking together, conservatives are fighting. Oh, my God. What difference does it make? Like, what? This has nothing to do with conservatives fighting. It has nothing to do with two black women fighting. It has nothing to do with anything like that. This is pers- a personal direct message attack that should have been left as such. This should have never made the light of day. Where I think Kim went wrong is not taking Candace up on her offer. She was so worried about not boosting her ratings on her show. You're not going to be able to stop that anyway. She has a show. You don't. Let's be real here. She has a show on Daily Wire and you don't. All she has to do is go in there and mention the situation and she's going to get ratings. It don't matter if you come on there or not. I think what she should have done was taken her upon her offer, whether she put things in her terms, she said, look, no, forget your show. We're going to go on Instagram live. Forget whatever. We're... No matter how she did it, she should have immediately shown her face and said, look, this is BS. Even if you're lying, mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to say something, but you curling up. With all the evidence and their messages of you curling up and not addressing it makes you look really bad. So I think that's yeah, what Kim went wrong. That's yeah, Kim hasn't, like I said, she hasn't stomped out anything that Candace brought up. She's she's made multiple posts on her story saying, I'm still not under investigation. And I'm thinking that does not that doesn't prove innocence. People do things all the time and no one ever finds out. Like that doesn't mean anything. That's the worst and- thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she said it. I, I I know for sure. There is twice where she said she's like still not under investigation, and then she would make posts about um like coming out stronger than ever or whatever something like that. And I'm thinking, okay, classic, you still haven't outright said none of this stuff is true. You said you would sue her for defamation, but you haven't. And she did that. She did this interview. I don't know if you saw it where this guy just kind of lobbed the, you know, lobbed questions at her that she could just, you know, e- it is easily like, Oh, you know, whatever he, he, this guy, he, I, I forgot what, I know it's on her Instagram. She, um, she's like, Oh, you can go watch it here. So whatever it is, it's on her Instagram, but it was, it was an interview that's supposed to set the record straight kind of thing. And I was, I learned absolutely nothing. Like, people, have this idea like you were saying that when you give your life to christ or you become born again or you know if you grew up in a church or whether you're recommitting yourself to whatever your path is that's between you and god then we're never gonna there's no perfect christian out there Mm -hmm. um you know i'm not even so sure it's wise to strive for perfection you could try to do the right thing try to live your life the best way possible but if you're going to try to be perfect i think you're setting yourself up for failure you're never going to be perfect all you can do oh, is try to continue to do the right thing and yeah. i think it could be kind of damaging to think that you're ever going to have it all together you're never going to have it all together that's why we need god in the first place if we had it all together we wouldn't need him because we're perfect right what do you what do you yeah. need what do you need a god for that's going to hold you accountable or someone to pray to when you need things to work out if you already got it all within yourself. So we, we are by nature imperfect, but we are perfect in, in Christ. And that's, and mm-hmm. that's where people, that's where people put too much pressure on themselves and too much pressure on, on, on Christians 
I had someone get on me the other day. I was on Twitter. And I posted something. We were posting about the, the, the thing. And uh, I was, I forget whose post I was sharing and commenting on. People just jumping. Oh, it was Kansas. People were jumping all over me. Oh, you know, I guess you're one of those anti this and that. And all. I'm not, I'm, a, I'm anti personally. I'm not going to try to spread, try to make anyone else feel the way I feel. I'm going to try to give you the mm-hmm. facts on why it doesn't make sense to do it. But I can't, you know, at the end of the day, it's your choice. And I, you know, as people like you, is the reason why people are going back into lockdown and all that kind of. I'm like, okay. Um, and so I said, I told a lady, I said, you know, you, you're good, you're dismissed. I'm, I'm done talking to you. And this is after I mentioned something about, I told her I trust God to protect me, and I don't need that thing. And people don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear that. They put science over God, and that's where you mess up. And um, after I told her she's dismissed. Oh, well, that's real godlike behavior, the godlike behavior. And you know, you're talking to me that way, but you're supposed to be so godly. I'm like, I didn't cuss at you, didn't call you your name. All I told you pretty much was to stop talking to me. Like, that's a sin because I don't want you seriously. And so people immediately want to attack your value, attack your values and your Christianity when you pretty much shut them down. And but beyond those idiots. I think a lot of time Christians do it to each other too. You oh, turn it yes. more into a religious practice rather than truly bringing your heart. But a relationship with God. Exactly. It's not a yeah. religious practice. It's more, it's a true heartfelt thing. Like you and your husband, right? You guys mm-hmm. truly love each other. Otherwise you wouldn't marry each other. And uh, I know you're a handful. So, he, you know, he's putting up with you for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. But it's not a religious practice. I'm sure he doesn't come to you and say, hey, as your husband, I am going to be the breadwinner. I'm going to go out there and work. Yeah, no. and I'd like for you to stay home and uh, cook all the meals and bear my children. <laughs> That's a practice. That's a yeah. caveman practice. Like yeah. he got from the Flintstones or something like that. That's not true heartfelt. Now you're going out of a routine. We could win this bread together. We could both clean up the kitchen. We could both cook. See what I'm saying? That's 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 how you that's a partnership. It's not a practice. Mm-hmm. That's what our relationship with Christ is supposed to be like, raw and real. We talk to him like we're talking to each other now. That's what he wants. That's how he talks to us. He talks to us on our level. But a lot yeah. of times we don't even hear his voice because we're distracted by this and that, like Candace and Kim arguments and stuff like that. And we yeah. don't even <laughs> We don't even take the time to take heed to the voice of the Holy Spirit when he's trying to instruct us. But I think all in all, Christians and conservatives and people in general need to stop putting so much pressure on each other to be at whatever level they think they're at. You know, just let people be who they are. And if you feel like you can help elevate them in life, then do so. But don't bring judgment on them because you think you're at a better level than they are. That's not how you win. That's not how you bring people into the body of Christ. If anything, you're going to push them, push them away from the church. Because you're, you're, you're ridiculing them rather than trying to help them. And I'm sure you're 10 years younger than me, but I'm sure there's some things that we were to dissect the word or even just talk about things in life. There's some things that you could show me that I don't know about. There's some things that you can teach me and I'll become enlightened regardless of our age difference because we refuse to be open and ready to learn from any and everyone that we cross paths with. No matter what side of the spectrum they're on. You could learn, even if they're an idiot. I don't want to be like that. (laughs) You're Mm -hmm. 10 years younger than me. And when I give you these compliments, I mean it from the heart because I wish that I was as smart as you and as focused as you are when I was 23. Um, And so it's, it's, when I do talk to you, the reason I keep asking you to do these interviews is because I want to hear your perspective outside of watching the videos because I can learn from anybody, and especially people like you who have figured it out long before people like are, are around my age and older than me. You've got it together. And uh, it's encouraging. Honestly, I feel like I'm still, I mean, like, I, I really, I really appreciate that. I feel like I'm still figuring it out. Like, that's something that I feel like I know things, but I don't know everything. Like, I, I always have that mindset because I don't. You know, kind of like what you were saying, like I have, I, there's, there's a lot, I'm sure I could learn from you because you're older than me. Like I I'm 23. I've been here for a little bit, but it's not, that's not a whole, (laughs) it's not a long time. So I'm always, I'm like, and you know, people should be open to, to 
to learning stuff and hearing different perspectives. Like for instance, I made a post on my Instagram. Um, my personal belief, I don't think you can forgive someone unless they ask for it. Right. And I'll, and I'll explain that right now. Cause you, cause a lot of this is romanticized idea of I've already forgiven you. And I think, okay, I think I understand what you're saying, but if I look at it from a biblical perspective, that isn't true because for someone for like Christ, Christ forgives us. Right. But that requires us to have to ask him. So Christ died to, you know, to forgive us of our sins and, and all of that. But there's how many verses that say to repent, right? To, to you, you have to ask him. People aren't walking around with security in him without first having done that step of right. you're, acknowledge, you're acknowledging your sin. Okay, that's part of it. You are acknowledging, hey, you know, this what I am doing, this is wrong. I am, and the person, or the say person, the one I have offended is Christ. You ask for forgiveness. Okay, so there's, so there's all, so there's all of that. I don't know where people, my personal opinion, I don't know where people get the idea that they can forgive someone. As, I should say Christians. I just say that because I've seen a lot of Christians do that. They've already forgiven them. It's like, okay. I think you can be ready to forgive someone. And by that, I mean, you're not holding anything against them. Um, you are willing to, you're wanting to and willing to have a relationship with them, even though they've, you know, they've trespassed against you. They've done some wrongdoing to you. You have all those things ready and that hundred percent makes sense. But the, if the person hasn't humbled themselves to ask for forgiveness, forgiveness can't take place. Right. Because they haven't acknowledged what they've done wrong to themselves or to you. So when people say that, I think that's what they mean. It just sounds like a very romanticized, like I've already forgiven you. We can just, you know, we can just move on. And it's like, that doesn't make, biblically, that doesn't make any sense. Because like, that's not, biblically, that's not how forgiveness even works. Right. The, the, you have to, you have to ask. And so this lady had messaged me, she, she was a uh, Christian and she was basically saying that, um, you know, she thinks that people can, that you can forgive someone, you know, and you just leave it to God and this, that. And I said, no, that's true. Yeah. Like you, the issue, you can leave it with God. You can do all of that. But the actual process of asking for forgiveness and being forgiven hasn't taken place. So you can be ready to forgive. You can have a heart ready to forgive. You have no bitterness. You have no, um, I, I guess, yeah, you have no bitterness if they were to come to you, you're not going to treat them like, you know, you're not going to treat them bad and treat them like trash or anything like that. You're just, you know, you, you can let go of those things, but the actual process of forgiveness, I don't believe takes place unless it's asked for. And I know that people disagree with me on that. And some, some agree, some don't. And it's like, that's, I, I my, personal, that's my, that's I, my I personal agree. belief. Yeah. No, you're exactly right. But, I think I, just like you have to go to Christ and repent. The reason for that, because he already forgives us, right? But the reason we have to go to him and actually repent is because it shows humility. It shows that we, that not only are we sitting there, we're not going to sit there and think, oh, I'm all good. God forgives me and continue on. That's the worst mindset mm -hmm. to be in. That's that reprobate mind where you're just like continuing on in your ignorance walking around in your mm -hmm. forgiveness, continuing to do all this stuff that you're doing, knowing that God forgives you. You cannot live like that. God don't want us to live like that. You have to come to him so he knows you recognize what you were doing wrong and you make an effort to fix it. So it's right there. Mm -hmm. I'm right there with you. <clears throat> People act like all have already forgiven you because they're ready to look good in that person's eyes. Some people use that as a guilt trip. Like, I'm past it. I'm good. I've already forgiven you. But have you really? Do you even know if that person is sorry or not? Like, mm -hmm. is yeah, forgiveness is more for you than them at the end of the day because you do have to get that weight off of you. But it is good to know that they realize where they messed up. And that's real important. That's where forgiving and this is a whole other topic. Forgiving and forgetting. I hate when people say forgive and forget. You're not going to forget. I don't want to yeah. forget because I want to know. I want you to know I'm not going to let you do that to me anymore. Forgive mm -hmm. is one thing. But when you say forgive and forget... Oh, I hate that phrase. You're not going to forget. Yeah. You shouldn't forget. 
If you forget, they're going to do it again. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Don't say that. Ugh. Anyway, so, so, <laughs> so my thing is like, you know, when it comes to humbling yourself before Christ or a person, like uh, say you and I were friends real cool and me and your husband get into it and we push each other down the flight of stairs, some shit, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to have to cut. We're all friends. I want to remain friends. It's not realistic for you guys to show up at your house or we meet each other in the park or whatever. And I come up. It's OK. I've already forgiven you. That's not realistic. We fell down a flight of stairs. You see what I'm saying? Like you want me to, yeah. come, especially if it's my fault. Deep down, you're going to want me to come and fix that. Like no matter how much you want to forgive and be all. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to want to hear it out of my mouth because it's my error. Yeah. And you're going to want to know that I am truly remorseful for what I did. Because that's going to tell cool. the whole story about where we stand from that point on. So it's yeah. not realistic to just say, I've already let it go. But have you? If someone brings it up or if it happens again, are you going to bring up the last time? Are you going to say, man, you did this to me before? You haven't let it go yet. So don't fake it. Don't fake it. Like, I don't like that. So I'm right there. We agree on that. We, we You have to humble yourself. It's, it's a, you have yeah. to. And that's where, that's where people really mess up when it comes to the idea of being a Christian. It's not a religion. It's a relationship. Okay. So with religion, that's based on works. You have to work your way into whatever you could probably list any sort of what, like, um, Buddhism, even Catholicism is like that. Um, Muslim, like, you constantly have to be doing works, 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 works. And in the hopes that you get to the place, right. you get to what, whatever it is that, that they will say heaven, or they have some, some other version. Okay. But as a Christian, it's not a religion. It's not works. It's relationship. It's your relationship with Christ. And even even after you're saved even after you're born again okay because you because it's based on relationship when you do something against god to keep that relationship healthy you need to acknowledge where you've done something wrong because being being a be, being born again you'll never lose that right you're not you, you don't have to constantly ask god over and over and over that's not that when that part is done it's done but to re- to maintain a good relationship with him, when you do something against him, you have to make it right. That's like with me, like like me. Uh, um, I mean, I guess any with anyone, any relationship, right? If I do something against my husband, we you know we're still married. But if I want our relationship to go back to how it was, I don't want things to be like rigid and you know, like you know th- that there's something between us. I have to go and make that right to maintain my relationship with him. Yeah. And it's this, it's the same thing with Christ. God tells us that he won't, there are times where he will not hear our prayers because we're doing something wrong. That doesn't mean you're not his child anymore. Right. After when, when, when you're born again, that doesn't mean you're not his child. That means you're his child that has done something against him and you need to make it right. Right. So like, that's where people people really mess up and and Christians I honestly have a hard time saying you know they're Christians because some of the actual fundamentals of being a Christian they don't even believe so if you don't believe if you don't believe those things you can't be a Christian but anyways they'll say that they'll say they're Christian they whatever that they believe in God and there's a verse in James where the where the Bible says basically basically I'm paraphrasing it's like okay, you believe, you know, you believe in God, you believe God exists. So do the devils in hell. Like they know that he exists too, but it's because that relationship isn't established. That's why they're where they are. And that's why, you know, God is where he is. So uh, I feel like nowadays people really, you know, because people will always come after Christians, right? Oh, well, you know, you're loving God, this and this. And like, that's real Christian of you and this and that. And I just think, you guys are you guys are looking at Christianity based off of works, and that's not that's not how the Christian life is. That's not what it is. It's a relationship, and and honestly, dude, oh my gosh. Okay, I understand people who 
people who have no sense of what the Bible is and what it contains will just cherry pick and say things. And you're like, well, God says not to judge. Okay, so it's way out of context, but you clearly don't know what you're talking about. So I treat it differently. But when Christians do that, when Christians will say things that is just completely not what the Bible says, that pisses me off like nothing else. Yeah. Because though like those people that will say things like, it's not my place to judge, it's only my place to love. And this it's like, okay, there is truth to some of that. Okay, because like like I did a video about um Turning Point USA and Brandy Love, the the porn star that they asked to leave. Oh, yeah. Okay. So a lot of people got upset about that too. And I'm like, I just, you know, I I, I don't I don't care. But my my thing was a lot of people, a lot of conservatives were saying, oh, you know, it's only free speech until it's something you don't like. You're, you know, it's all Christianity. You you love everyone until it's someone like that. And it's like, first of all, I don't know what version of God you guys know, because is God love? A hundred percent. He also doesn't mess around either. Like read any of the old Testament. Okay. Like God has, God has standards. He has things like that. Now, is he going to like, let's say someone like Brandy Love, because uh, I don't know where the Christianity thing was brought into it with her because conservative and Christian is not the same thing, but that's something that all of a sudden a lot of people were like, they were conflating conservatism, conservatism with Christianity, probably because conservative is founded in like Christian principles and stuff, but there was a whole lot of that. It's like, well, it's not very loving of you Christians, you know, because she does this, she does that. And it's like, well, okay. Do you love your kid? Yeah. Okay. Do you let them do whatever they want? No. If they do something wrong, you tell them you aren't coming down like fire from heaven. And you know, like, you're going to be cast into hell. This and that. It's like, no, if, if she, she's doing something that is morally wrong. If they don't want that at their event, which is their event, they can run it how they want to, they can ask her to leave. Okay. The, the fact that she is currently in a, uh, in a job that's, that destroys, literally destroys people's lives. Yeah, you can that's... call it out for what you can call it out for what it is. That doesn't mean you hate her. You yeah. can hate the, the, what the thing is but not her because people can change. And for, for Christians to just do that stupid, it's not my place to judge. I said it in my post, what are you good for if you don't stand for something? You don't have to hate Brandy Love, but for the love of God, can you stand against what she's doing? Like, there's so much about modern day Christians right now that is just so out of balance because people are looking at this as a works thing and a religion, like you were saying, right. And, um, like going through the motions, doing the acts, but the relationship is not there. So I don't know where I got on that rabbit trail from, but I just kind of uh, went I with it. Read Cause that's I something it. that you, that I you said, read about, but about, it's, it's true. <laughs> I don't remember how we got there either, but I like it because it's very true. I think a lot of Christians today are doing more damage than good. And this is the this is the worst time to be doing that. We're in a we're we always been in a spiritual battle, but but I don't think there's been any point in history where it's been so blatant and so open with the evils of what's going on. Every single thing that would make sense to do is not being done. Every sense that everything that would make sense to not do is being done is the exact opposite. They're close. They want to close the schools and close churches, but they're leaving the border wide open. They want to make people take the vaccine by force if necessary. But you're letting uh, illegals come in here without even being so much as tested. You're 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 openly, strongly fighting for trans material in schools and make it think it's okay for some guys to create a song, even though they tried to say they were they were just joking about converting your children. Oh and yeah. And all that crap, you got trannies showing up at public libraries. You got a dude dressed up as a monkey with a penis. And you have 
all these demonic and dark things happening every day and they're all designed to target our children and manipulate their minds. And then you're making men less masculine and making them more feminine to where they want to become women, which is destroying the family because what woman is going to want a man like that? And Mm -hmm. if people aren't seeing this, you're poisoning the minds of their children to hate each other and to be homosexuals at a young age, which leads down the path of wrong things because the homosexual suicide rates and domestic violence rates are sky high when they're in same sex relationships. And people don't want to talk about that. You know, it's damaging for kids to be gay at young ages because they don't even know what they like yet. They don't even have, they haven't even experienced the opposite sex yet, but before they get a chance, you want to scramble their brains to where they immediately go to the same sex. That leads to STD. You can have an STD with this opposite sex, but I'm talking about as far as some of the quickest ways to, to, for it to happen yeah. is with same sex. But you're yeah. pushing kids to start experimenting at earlier ages. You're not teaching them about pregnancy prevention. You're telling them it's okay to kill the kid if they ended up pregnant when they don't want to be. Then you're you're not telling you. I'd rather them pass out condoms in school than to make kids be okay with abortions. Like mm-hmm. we're not talking about preventative measures. We're talking about doing what you want without your parents knowing about it. If you do end up in a jam, that's not okay. They have a talking bot on the on the Planned Parenthood website that you can ask any question and 24 seven, there's someone sitting on the other side of that bot answering questions. And it starts at the age of 12 or 13. You should not be able to go ask anybody questions other than your parents. You should not be able to go to school. What happened to the awkward conversation about the birds and the bees? That's not even awkward anymore because they're not even talking about it. They're not talking about the birds and the bees. They're talking about trans. That's a problem. They're trying to tell kids that it's really getting me heated. They're, They're trying to tell kids that, there was, a, there was a teacher, I can't remember what state it was in. The boy was uncomfortable because whatever exercise they were doing in class was with, with another male, and he was uncomfortable with the exercise. I forget what it was. The teacher said that, well, if you don't do this, you're homophobic. What? It, it's a problem. You're teaching kids to not only accept all kinds of sexuality as if it's okay, you're teaching them to hate the opposite race. Some lady went on Facebook and bragged because her black child transferred out of a class that had a white teacher because the teacher was white. Didn't know what the teacher was bringing to the table. Didn't even know if he was a good teacher or not. Found out that her friend had a black teacher and she wanted some of the action. So she said, mama, train, uh, transfer me out of here. And she transferred her kid to a class that had a black teacher as if it matters. I know a lady who sent me a message on Instagram that said that they're trying to force her and her staff, her uh, co-workers to drill into these kids heads that unless the teacher is the same race as them there's no way that they have the best interest at heart there's just no way they have their best interest at heart unless they're the, unless they're the same race so unless the teacher's black and you're a black student they really don't care about you so not only are they dividing the students they're teaching the students to have a bias against the teacher before they even get a chance to start the class the devil is busy He's ruining the kids and he's making the, the men more effeminate. Um, and, and it's we're in a dangerous time right now. Population control is not just coming with this shot. It's not just coming with these diseases. It's coming by way of making yeah. men less desirable to women and making men not even want women and making kids want the same sex. So you're not going to procreate. You're not going to build a family like that. Like, this is the worst time for Christians to go about some of these things in, in the manner that they are, because the world needs God more than Trump, more than DeSantis, more than Marjorie Taylor Greene or all these beloved politicians that are doing good things right now. They can't save the world for us. We need God right now more than any politician we can hope to come save the world. And it's going to take people yeah. like us to to say these things, to show up at school board meetings, to pray over this country. We don't do that enough. I'm guilty of this too. We don't take the time to pray about the issues. We talk about them. And and I'm not crapping on anybody because I'm guilty of this as well. I made a point in one of my other videos that what would happen, the, the numbers that Trump rallies pull in, could you imagine what would happen if people were to gather at a Trump rally and everybody be over there praying and speaking in tongues? Could you imagine the world change that would happen right then, there's power in that. We don't do that enough, though. And this is why the world is suffering, because 
we're not using the power that we already possess to make things happen. I'm not even talking about petitions. We, we have spiritual advantages because of who our God is that we're not even taking hold of. And I don't know what it's going to take. Some people don't even believe we have this kind of power, but we do. We have the power to speak. We have the power to believe and our faith carries, our faith is, it's volumes to that. So I just, I don't, I don't know when Christians are going to figure it out, but if we were to unite in Christ, not, not Trump supporters, not MAGA hats, not protests and, and, and petitions, if we were to unite in Christ and try to make these changes, there would be nothing they could do to stop us like, at all. What it is like for me, I'm not going to participate in a lifestyle that I don't agree with. Right. Yeah. So whether that's, you know, you, you want me to call you a certain thing and you know, you want this, this man wants me to call him a woman. No, you're, if you're going to live your lifestyle, you're going to live it. I am not obligated to participate with you because of my beliefs. I believe that is not true. I believe that it, well, I mean, fact, I mean, it is wrong, but okay. But just for the sake of argument, I believe that is wrong and I'm not going to be a part of it. And I'm going to stand by it. Cause I, be, cause I truly believe that. So it, and conservatives, man, it's like, what do you guys, what do you guys believe anymore? Cause that, that thing that happened with Brandy Love and Turning Point USA, that really made me like, what, you know, what is, what are, what does conservative even mean anymore? Like, what are we conserving? Cause everything keeps changing. Right. I just, so I think some people are so caught up in the movement and have an opportunity to make a name that they're really not making an impact at all. Like you got, you have people like Marcus yeah. Hemingway that I was talking about. This dude needs to be way more recognized than what he is. There's a girl I follow named Suni, the middle child. This girl is so smart. This girl is so freaking smart. And I don't think her platform is what it is. She'll have Bryson creates or creates whatever his name is. I can't stand him. Mm. Can't stand that dude. Um, is- and she'll have him on there all the time. People with names, but she herself, I don't think she's as big as she should be. People like you, you're major on TikTok, you're major on YouTube, and your numbers on Instagram are climbing. I've been watching. You're going to get where you should be, if not more. But I think you should already be in the double digit thousands of followers on uh, Instagram based on your content. And um, that's the unfortunate part about some of the people who have names and aren't posting halfway, anyway, near the quality of content other people are putting out. But they have bigger numbers. Why? Because they may show some flesh like me and Frankie Rodriguez were talking about one time. She said she dresses the way she does during her videos because she don't want people focusing on flesh. She wants people to hear what she's saying. But then you have flesh peddlers out there. You'll have guys who want this ultra aggressive look. A guy and people are sometimes focused more on their charisma rather than their their content. And mm-hmm. people are blessed to have both. Like you, you have the charisma, you got the content, you got it all. Like Frankie, uh, like the Harris twins. Uh, you know, there are plenty of people out there who look good and talk well at the same time. Uh, I only have the content. So for me, I, <laughs> I want to <laughs> I want to push the content uh, to a higher level. Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah, I got. Sure. Um, but I, what are you, are you working on anything that we should be looking out for? I know you got the jewelry going. I saw that you opened your fitness page too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So kind of, I, I guess I'm kind of just putting out different things, just, you know, different people. I do have, um, the fitness page on Instagram. That's Pisano fitness. Um, then my apparel store, which would be Pisano original. So I'm keeping it very like, you just look for my name and it's there, but yeah, I'm just, I, I've been working on that. Um, I have some different content coming up, but it's going to be kind of more transitional if that makes sense. But, um, yeah, just people is keeping up with my podcast, Jordan Pisano podcast. And, um, I always tell point people to my Instagram, um, Jordan Pisano. So it's all like all has my name. So it's easy. So it's easy to find. Um, Oh, and that's I, one I Z. Really, I made a mistake yes. when I first started following you. That's P I Z A N O. No, it's not two Z's, yeah. it's not pizza. Yeah. It's just, yeah, Z. just one. And, uh, I really just point people there because that's where everything is updated. Um, 
yeah, we will see y'all soon. And be ready <laughs> for the next video where we dissect the George Bush thing. Because I'm ready. <laughs> I'm oh, ready my for goodness. That. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see y'all soon.